Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Mood Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today we'll be talking a little bit about the box office and what I've been working on. Again, huge shout out to JJ for giving me this recommendation of trying to put the numbers into an actual Excel sheet. That way it'll be a visible, visible representation for everyone to be able to see what I'm talking about. But also it's able to keep myself on track as well, seeing that some of these websites like the numbers and, of course, the you know rest in peace box office mojo.com are no longer offering the types of numbers that I used to have access to and so now I'm just going to keep track of it myself because that way as the weeks go on I can track and see how well my projections are doing and also how well the math itself holds up and that way you also can see that as well to see just how far off the market is or how close to the market is so that way you understand how these numbers work and whether they are reliable and so the only two movies that I have so far because they're the only two movies where I have the first two week total which again, as I've mentioned previously, is very important when determining how much a movie is going to make. Um, if you are able to find videos of the past of movies that I've done uh, where I talk about this is what it's made after the first two weeks, please feel free to contact me through email or Twitter or any of those social media platforms to say, hey, it's this video where you talk about the first two weeks of this movie try and add that to your list to see and show just how well it held up then to now. So if you are able to do that and help me out with that work, I really, really, really would appreciate that. But right now we have two movies to talk about, and that is Frozen 2 and Knives Out. I talked about Frozen 2 already because we are technically in the third week for Frozen 2, which means we can kind of track to see just how close it is to the minimum and maximum projections that I have for the film. But we also have Knives Out by Ryan Johnson. Now notice that the movies that I have listed here are with international releases. So these are the only two films with international releases that I have the two-week totals for at this point in time. I was going to add a movie called uh, Queen and Slim, but that only has a domestic total. And the reason why you have to have an international release is because all of the math and all of the figures that I've figured out for this formula have either been based on industry standards or have been just through my own experience of films with international box office. So when you have just a local film that comes out in one country like Queen and Slim just coming out in the U.S. and the domestic market, maybe Canada as well, then you have a little bit more difficulty determining just how much money that movie is going to actually make, which is why that one is not listed here. So if you have any other, other movies that you want to recommend that you actually have the, the, the two-week totals, so the international two-week totals, please feel free to contact me. So Frozen 2, as you can see, after its first two weeks as of last weekend, had made $738.5 million. That is, of course, including a very successful Thanksgiving holiday break, which means the minimum projection of what this film is going to make is a little over $1 billion. Now, that is something I think is not going to happen. I think it's going to very much exceed the $1.05 billion range because that's why it's a minimum projection. I think it's getting a little bit closer to the maximum projection because it has been performing extremely well in the foreign and domestic totals, and we don't really have a whole lot of competition going towards that marketplace. We have Jumanji, uh, the next level coming out, which is going to be more towards, I would say, adult teenage audiences. Frozen 2 is definitely more towards the kids, and there really aren't a whole lot of kid-centric films of that large of a scale coming out over the next couple weeks, or at least none that I am aware of, and so it pretty much will have that market cornered uh, for the holiday season, which is why it probably will get closer to that max total, but anything higher than that is not nearly as likely, but it's still possible, of course, because these are estimates, and estimates can indeed be wrong. On the other hand, you have Knives Out, which had a worldwide total after the first week of $70 million and has now reached $99.6 million, almost $100 million for the Ryan Johnson-led film. And you know what? If this is the type of movie that needs to do well for Ryan Johnson, if it means that he's going to keep making these movies and not do anything with Star Wars, hey, you know what? Please. Go right ahead. Make your knives out. Make your whodunits. Make your you know quirky, smart, so-called smart films that some people will go see. As long as it means you stay out of Star Wars, then all of us will be happy. So let me go ahead and just dive into the numbers a little bit further. So those are the uh, the two-week totals. And the minimum projection, sorry, uh, the minimum projection for Knives Out is going to be $142.3 million, meaning that it likely will make at the end of its run, by the end of its run, around that amount. Now, will it reach that point? It's really going to be hard to say. The, the drop-off from week one to week two for that film was not that drastic, and so it very well could reach that point. However... I would need to see some really strong numbers from the foreign market, from the international market, for that number to really stick at this point. But as of now, based on the math that I've worked out for myself, $142.3 million is likely going to be that number. So what does it mean by if 70%? It means that if this two-week total that you see here, 99.6, if that number is 70% of the 
end total, 70% of the end total, then that end total would have to be $142.3 million because $99 million is 70% of $142 billion. Now, the reason why many films don't really get to that point is because most films tend to make much more, around 60% or so of their box office in the first uh, two weeks, and therefore will end up making a little bit more. So 70% is definitely on the higher end of the scale, and that is normally, you're not going to see films tend to make uh, less than that at the box office because of the way the numbers work out. So that is going to be the minimum projection for both of those films. So let's go to the next scale. So we got max projection. So let's assume that, you know, things go crazy for both of these movies. Things go absolutely bonkers. Everyone's buying tickets left and right. Well, that means that the film, if it's 50%, meaning if in the first two weeks, it ends up making half of what it makes by the end of its run, this is what those numbers would have to look like. So the max numbers for Frozen 2 would be $1.4 billion. I would say based on these numbers that we're getting in, again, the fact that Frozen 2 is at $919 million after three weeks seems to indicate it's very well on pace to reach that number. That's going to be, of course, an insane number. Going to put it into the top five, top three highest grossing films of 2019, where the highest end four knives out. So assuming that after today, it makes another $100 million or so, the max projection for that would be $199.3 million. So as you can see, both of these films doing very well. The average, that would be the 60% range, which is normally the range that I go with, means for Frozen 2, it'll make around 1.26. So either make 1.26 or very close to it. I'm imagining it's going to be a little bit higher than the 1.26, again, closer to that mass pro max projection. And the average for Knives Out is going to be $170.8 million, which it's definitely possible for that film to reach that point. But something tells me that it'll probably get closer to that minimum uh, projection even though it's reached $100 million, I don't think that film is going to have a lot of legs, but of course, I could be wrong on that. But remember, when it comes to the box office numbers, the raw totals is not everything. There, there's more to the story than that, and that's why you got to talk about how much the film actually costs to make and to market. So the first story we have to talk about is the fact that we don't have any official numbers for Frozen 2. So these are estimates. So these are estimates on my end, and so therefore, this is just my complete guess. The first Frozen film costs $150 million to make, to actually produce the film. So I assume that it costs a little bit more to make this movie. So let's assume on a low end that it costs $200 million to actually produce the film. Well, the total cost, when you add marketing, marketing being about 50% of the actual budget added on top, would mean that the total cost of Frozen 2 was $300 million. Now, when it comes to, Fro uh, when it comes to Knives Out, we were given the budget for that $40 million, meaning half of that added to it would be $60 million for a total cost. And because we have those numbers, or at least some of those projections, it means that if we go to the minimum and maximum projections that we worked out, we'll be able to figure out just how much or how little a film will end by the end of its run. So as you can see, I have some more totals that I'm going to add down the line because I am going to add it to where when we get a final box office number, have that number in and then compare it to the other numbers that I predicted. And then I'll have a metric of how off my projections were and what number it actually was etc so that will be something we'll do a little bit further down the line so that's why as i said if you find movies that i've talked about before where i say this is the first two weeks internationally let me know because then we can actually start to put those numbers in now for it but if you take into account then the amount of cost that frozen 2 had projected again on a lower end probably cost a little bit more so i'm definitely being generous with that number and of course the the ones for knives out which we do have these are the actual gains and losses you're looking at both of them are going to be in the positive category for this time so there's going to be other films that are definitely going to be in the negatives, like Charlie's Angels is definitely going to be losing money. Solo A Star Wars Story is a great example of a film that lost a crap ton of money at the box office too. But both of these movies will have gains. And so the minimum gain, meaning let's assume that it makes that minimum expectation of around $1.2 billion or so. Take into account subtracting the production costs, subtracting the marketing, the actual gain, the actual profit, the actual net gain, net profit for Frozen 2, at the very least, will be $333 million versus $586 million as far as the max goes, with an average gain of $459.6 million. So it's going to make hundreds of millions of dollars for Disney. going to be a giant success. It might be a little bit less than that if the production budget is higher than what I have estimated that it is, which again could be the case, but still 
hundreds of millions of dollars is this film going to make, and that's absolutely insane. Where you have Knives Out, which costs much less, looking at a minimum gain of $25 million and a max gain of around $60 million. So meaning that Knives Out is going to be profitable. If the numbers hold out, if the estimates hold out, which they very likely will, especially on that minimum end at the very least, then you're looking at a film that is definitely going to be making some profit. So not crazy amounts of profits, but profit nonetheless. And as I said, dude, Ryan Johnson, if this is what you need to do to make money, and if this is what you need to do to stay away from Star Wars, please go right ahead, man, because those are good gains. For $40 million and $20 million marketing, hey, you know what? That's a great gain on you, man. Good job. Good job. Your movie made money and didn't destroy universe because it was your own original idea. Please continue to write those stories. I won't go to see them because you're an asshat, but hey, at the very least, it keeps you out of our beloved Star Wars universe because, let's be honest, you destroyed it with your movie. And it was already going on that road in the first place, but you pretty much put the nail in the coffin when it comes to Star Wars in your Disney trilogy. Terrible massacre of a film. Anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Do you think these numbers are right? Do you think that you might have less profit for Frozen 2 or less profit for for Knives Out. Let me know your numbers. And also, if you want to do this at home, please feel free to follow the math that I'm using. I, I've had a couple people email me saying, hey, this is the math that I came up with myself. But now I'm starting to add in other categories every week, like, for example, the budget of the film, the marketing cost of the film, things like that. These are all estimates, of course. That's why I can't wait to see what the final numbers are, because it'll tell us just how accurate these estimates are and how close we get to it. I imagine that for Frozen 2, we'll get pretty close. As I said, I think the $1.4 billion mark is definitely within reach and I think is definitely the more likely number that it's going to make. And so it'll be interesting to see just how far off I am from the average. Again, I usually go with that 60% range, as I said beforehand, as far as how much it makes in the first two weeks, but it could be more and it could be less, which is why I have that minimum and maximum range and the average, of course, that usually falls in line with what I think is more likely to happen. So let me know thoughts about this and all the things we talked about today in the comment section below. If you're still confused, let me know in that pinned comment. If there's something that you need me to better explain, I, again, I hopefully, hopefully visuals were able to help with that and also having the percentages there when they needed to be there, etc. Hopefully that makes some sense. Obviously, I know not everyone loves math, but hey, I like talking about this stuff because I love talking about the box office because I'm a movie geek, movie nerd. Let me know your thoughts about this and all the things talked about in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash the like button, give me a subscribe. It helps me out a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.